All right, I'm back. We got ourselves some more foam brewers. This one's called Pavement. And from foam brewers right there, some interesting artwork. It looks like it starts off as like a uh, twisting and turning keyboard that leads to a mosaic of a very large chalice or snifter. Um, but yeah, it's called Pavement. Let's see. Keep gold. Time kills art. That must be the artist. And it's a double IPA coming in at 8.2. So pavement double IPA. Cool artwork. Let's go ahead and crack it. Let's see what this thing's all about. We got ourselves a uh, Tiku glass today. So that's what we'll be utilizing for the beer tasting. Got a nice vibrant yellow, bright yellow color to it. That'll do. That'll do just fine. You can see that right there in the light. Looking very nice in the light. Bright white uh, foam on top. And it has a very like light, pleasant, effervescent citrus on top. It's actually, it's a very enjoyable smell. I like that quite a bit. Now, these are hops, people. <laughs> when I'm when I'm talking about um, wanting a beer scented soap, this is what I'm talking about. Like the these are hops that are giving it this aroma, this beautiful citrus. I love it. Oh man, that's really good shit. That was very bold and banging. <laughs> that had a uh, that hit me in the chops with some flavor. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I really like that. <clears throat> this one kind of comes across with um, some real prominent like citruses, but then there's something more juicy and fruity underneath, like tropical fruits or something. So it hits you with kind of the zing and the... Uh, the tart citrus, but then there's something like juicy and sweet underneath, you know, very nice mix. I really like that. All right, let's get into today's shave. We're going to be using Declaration Grooming's uh, shaving soap in the milk steak base, and the scent is done by Chatelon Lux, and this one is called Chomps de Lavande, and it is originally based off a men's fragrance from Chatelon Lux. Um... And then utilized in the milk steak shaving soap by Declaration Grooming. And you can see where I scoop some out and kind of what the uh, surface looks like originally there. Give you a look at the side label, including but not limited to the ingredients, which there's a huge laundry list of ingredients. Very big list there. Nice little side label and some information about Declaration Grooming. Okay, let's set that to the side. I have it all lathered up already. And the Thirsty Badger Shave Bowl right here, a fine bowl, product out of Canada, has that nice loop for your hand or your thumb to slide through to get better control of the bowl. I'm using my That Darn Rob shaving brush. They are now called uh, Chisel and Hound. But um, same maker, same artisan. Got this beautiful purple dyed um, burl wood here with a black topper on it. And then a Fanchurian badger knot on top of that. And that's, I don't know what version that is. It's from a version a long time ago. All right, let's get some moisture on the face. Let's get this shave on the road. Hope everybody is doing good. Hope everybody had a good day. I had um, a bit of a shitty start, but a strong finish. And uh, sometimes that's what you got to do. You just got to roll with the punches. <clears throat> but now we're off. I had uh, some tacos for dinner. And now we're getting a, a nice shave here. And you can see that 
that soft curl from that nicely hydrated lather as it falls over on itself, kind of cascades over on itself. And in the light, you might be able to see the sheen. Uh, if not, I have shitty lighting. There is sheen. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. The Milk Steak Soap Base is a very nice soap base. I like it quite a bit. I haven't used it in a while, but uh, my hankering for the soap base got brought up recently when I saw it on a Shave of the Day pick, which seems to be a uh, an enabler for me. <laughs> I see a nice Shave of the Day that I uh, that I like and appreciate the uh, the artwork or just the ensemble that that person put together for their daily shave and I will get motivated to use uh, similar products or partial products um, from their shave in my shave and so it's kind of cool I'm sure this is a normal occurrence for a lot of us uh, hobbyists out there but uh, yeah I saw the milk steak soap base being used in a in a shave of the day and I just thought man haven't used that in a while I need to break it out run it through its paces and uh, just see how I'm feeling about milk steak you know after not using it for a while I will say the lathering process was very enjoyable I know some people um, think milk steak is a bit finicky but I really don't I like it and um, I rarely rarely have issues with the milk steak soap base and um, this particular scent chomps de lavande it is a bold and banging lavender like this ain't no pussy lavender this lavender will punch you in the fucking face <laughs> and I love it this is a good lavender mm -hmm. we're gonna be using Old Faithful here this is my Gem 1912 razor. Old school. You can see a, a bit of the design. There's a, look good, a closer look at the basic bitch handle. These old gems, they did have some with kind of like an art deco design on those. And those are really the more desirable ones. They look fucking fantastic. You could get a look at that, um, that guard right here, that safety guard with the lather channels. You just kind of push it open it's on a spring you just push it open kind of like that there's a look at the blade kind of looks like a paint scraper blade but make no mistake it this one here was specifically designed for shaving and so don't ever find yourself in a situation where you're using paint scraper blades or you know construction blades for shaving you will not get the result that you're wanting. I promise you. The grind is different. The way that they're honed is different. So you're not going to get the result you want if you try to use one of those hardware blades in your shaving razor. Gotta buy shave specific blades. These ones are called gem blades. And gem just refers to the type of razor, not necessarily the the brand of the blade. Luckily, um, gem razors they have a few options, a few different options for blades at their disposal. So they're not uh, it's not a complete monopoly on blades. There are a few different options out there. The most popular ones I think are the the PTFE Teflon coated blades um, and they are very nice blades don't get me wrong but I don't I don't have any problems with any of the the blades that I've tried another thing is people don't really like uh, these blades getting rust on them if you leave them out um, like on your your bathroom countertop or something like that and it's understandable, it's unsightly and whatnot, but so long as there's no, uh, as long as there's no rust anywhere near the edge, I think you'll be alright, more or less, like it's not the end of the world there. 
Just something to be aware of. I always take my razor completely apart, take the nice soft towel to it, and dry it off. I also take the blade out, and I dry the blade completely off, both sides. Leave it, leave it somewhere where it can actually get some airflow to it and dry out entirely. I find that really stops the occurrence of rust uh, for the most part. You'll end up with a blade that you can use many times until you finally have to replace it. So it's really not that much extra effort in order to get the desired result of a blade that doesn't rust all the time. All right, pass one went by super smooth. So the scent on this one, I didn't actually write down the scent notes, maybe on one of my previous videos using this, because I've used this multiple times. Um, so you could go check those videos if you want more of a first impressions or a more thorough breakdown of this scent. Uh, but I didn't fish out my scent notes for this one. But this one here, like I said, it's a, it's a bold and banging lavender. This isn't a lavender that gives me calm, soothing vibes. This isn't a lavender that I'd want to, like, necessarily wear right before bed. Or a lavender that, you know, I would use to, uh, gently bring myself into, uh, the next working day, you know, in the morning. This is a, this is a statement lavender. You know, this, this lavender, <laughs> it has a, has a punch to it and I like it. Um, it's kind of like wild and uh, herbaceous. It's kind of earthy and spicy. Um, this, yeah, I like it. I mean, this is a good fucking lavender. <laughs> That's the only way I could put it. This one here, Lavender Lovers, or so-called Lavender Lovers. Um, this one will probably be uh, polarizing <laughs> when it comes to uh, Lavender Lovers. Because it is kind of spicy and earthy. And a bit more wild and herbaceous. And it doesn't really give those, those uh, calm, gentle vibes. It's very much so um, a powerful fragrance, this one. I think that's why I like it so much. In my pursuit of lavenders last year, or maybe two years ago, or maybe three years ago, <laughs> I don't remember when it was, but in the past, I was pursuing a, um, a lavender that would actually move me. Because I tried um, Dr. John's Flowers in the Dark, and I had always heard about it being, you know, one of the best lavenders in the game. And I like the concept of it being like a, a dark lavender, um, whatnot, kind of the concept being like, um, you know, it had like that coffin wood and shit like that along with the lavender flowers. And so I really had high hopes for it when I smelled it, I was like, Smells like a basic bitch lavender candle. Like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't appreciate it at all. I was like, and it wasn't that I disliked the scent. The, sun, the scent was fine. It was pleasant. But I just wasn't moved by it in any way, shape, or form. And so then I was left wanting. And I went looking for lavenders that would actually move me. Lavenders that would actually excite me and this is one of them ones. This is one of the ones that This did the trick So if you're looking for a lavender That will uh <laughs> Kick some ass without spilling its drink This is that one Hot damn, if you haven't got your hands on one of these vintage gems, 
specifically one of these old 1912. This is definitely something that you should look into. Get on eBay or Etsy and uh, get in on these great shaves, man. These uh, these old vintage gems, they just feel good. And if you've never shaved with a gem before, they have their own kind of learning curve. Really easy to pick up and adopt. It's just more or less a different shaving angle. Shaving with uh, light pressure and all that. That's pretty much the same as any other razor that you use. But the shave angle where you kind of, this is the top cap, where you kind of just ride the cap, put it flat to your skin, and then pull it off just a little bit. Just a little bit, maybe 10, 15 degrees off the skin contact. And that'll give you that desired angle there. Very nice. The blades on these gems are a little bit more rigid. And so people with a little bit thicker growth might also find that they have great success with these razors. Not to say that they're harsh in any way because I really don't think that they are. So long as you're using proper technique, there's nothing at all to worry about. Same with any razor. And people with, you know, lighter beards, lighter stubble and growth. You don't have nothing to be afraid of when using these old gem razors. They're not, they're not uh, any different than your DEs in terms of just using light pressure, hold that proper angle. Make sure you're shaving in a way that has, you know, that's beneficial to shaving, you know, with the grain, across the grain, against the grain, or some variation of that that works for you. I have a little spiral right on the Adam's apple that I always got to pay some extra attention to. All right, that shave just felt so good. Every time I use this razor, man, it just feels so good. It's like, I just want to keep shaving. <laughs> There's nothing left to shave, but I just want to keep shaving. All right, and that, that just went exactly how I wanted it to, how I needed it to, but how I expected it to. That, that just, that went perfect. Let's go ahead and get this lather off the face get into a little bit of post shave and I'll let you guys go all right let's get this off here we'll grab the old Lancaster pure luxury <laughs> like the stallion says that is nice very nice close shave all right let me grab my towel I didn't take it off the hanger here. All right. Wipe down real quick with the Lancaster. That scent was a winner, man. That is a winner. That's a lavender that's not going nowhere. That's staying in my den. I don't really know. It's like a, this lavender would probably be considered a casual banger in my book. It's not necessarily a sexy date night fragrance or a night out on the town fragrance. It's not necessarily in that realm. This might even be a little bit much to be an office work fragrance, depending on your setting. Um... But a casual banger for when you're just running errands and you're going to get some enjoyment out of it on a personal level. Maybe you're just doing chores around the house. That'd be a good time to break this one out. Or just running errands like at the grocery store. 
You're not going to be necessarily packed right on top of others who might be offended. That'd be a good time. <clears throat> okay. Spent a little bit too much attention on the beard cleanup there. One way or another, I always find a way to get over that 20 minute mark against my best efforts. All right, declaration grooming, aftershave splash right here. There is a look at the ingredients. Hopefully it focuses enough. That font really doesn't help when it comes to camera time. Let's go ahead and twist the cap off. We got an industry standard quality restrictor right there. And that works just fine. All right, and this splash has a little bit of alcohol in it, and that results in a, a little bit of a tingle, but make no mistake, it's a good tingle, and I like it. All right. All right, that completes the shave. Go ahead and rub the forearms to complete the scent bubble, and let's grab the, the shave ridge and check out. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Have a good rest of your week. Cheers.